And we are live with episode 188 of the Start, Build, Grow Show. Randy Brothers, my friend, what is going on? The sun is out. We got some good weather in Denver, Colorado, finally. I'm feeling good. <laughs> finally. Spring is in the air. Uh, mm. Man, that's all I could say. It's finally, it seems like it's been a long, long winter for us here in the in this market. But everywhere I look up, there's, there's storms happening. There's things happening. The roofing industry is alive and well. Mm. The support, the tech space all the the companies that support the roofing industry are alive and well and today we have a special guest that is one of the the, the premier companies that's been supporting the the roofing industry and quite honestly you guys kind of like completely changed the game when it came to roofing and uh you know man i've been a, a, a client of yours i've been using your product for 12 10 12 i don't know how long you guys have been around since the beginning pretty much <laughs> Randy and, brings uh, the o- randy's always the OG i'm like the og of everything. all these things right but we <laughs> yeah, finally exactly. got you on mr brady campbell with eagle view what's up yeah. brady my man how we doing so you know we always like to start it out with a little brief intro of, of who you are how in the world you ended up into the, the roofing world um so so tell us a little about your background and how you ended up working with eagle view and now we're working with roofing contracts throughout the country yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I grew up born and raised in Oregon. Um, I actually got a really good opportunity. I came from a small business. My dad ran a business and, you know, his story kind of like resonates with me because um, he went through the hard path, like a lot of our roofers do every single day, you know, to get started. And it came down to him um, literally starting a hot dog cart, right? And just one little hot dog cart in front of a hospital. And he did that in the off time while he was a firefighter. So he was working two jobs, right? So um, he got the opportunity, though, to make it successful. And when one caught the cart, went to two, went to four, um, he started to get into catering and his own restaurant. And I start to see that how that scaling effect kind of worked for him. But, you know, my, my dad, like, he, he didn't believe in child labor laws. Like I was sweeping. I was cleaning. Like I was doing everything possible. So if I could do math, I was on the cash register. So it was it was a good opportunity for me just to see the business, the highs and lows of it. And so. Um, you know, I took that experience. I, I got into college. I went into retail for a bit. And then uh, a friend of mine said, you need to hop onto this new tech company called Eagle View. And uh, they're able to measure st- structures, you know, remotely by aircraft. And I'm obviously saying that's BS. It's impossible. But I hopped on and I was a, it's called a regional account manager, was in a cubicle, just, you know, hammering phones and so forth. But uh, Eagle View has grown pretty fast the past eight, 10 years. And so I've had a really good opportunity, great leadership there. And so now I run the uh, business development team for the construction and solar vertical for us today. Super cool, man. And Randy, yeah. you've been using you've been a user for for some time, hey? Of uh, of Eagle View. Tell oh, me yeah. about, like, about your your process and why well, you. Well, I remember. You know, I'm going to go back old school now, and uh, I remember, you know, when I was an insurance adjuster back in the day, using you know a rope and harness. Right. I remember I had another guy on the other end. We would take, you know, climbing equipment, climbing ropes. We would we would hook drill holes in tennis balls, put like two or three tennis balls together to create some weight behind it. Tie big knots, tie that up, swing and toss that thing all the way up over the roof to run a line. Right. And then one person, you know, with a belay around his hips, around his waist and I'm getting on the roof, going all the way back and forth, measuring those things. You know what I mean? Measuring the roofs. It, it, it was pretty crazy, pretty sketchy. And that doesn't really even exist anymore, thanks to you guys. Uh, but, yeah, I remember those days. And and then we got turned on to you, man, probably before I even started my roofing company. And and it just changed the game. I mean, it was it was like, let's now we can actually just press a button and have all the measurements and all the stuff we need to, to write estimates and to write claims and to do the whole deal. It was It's been, shoot, over a decade now that I've been – using those sort of technology yeah. mm-hmm. we're, we're in the game of saving tennis balls lives these days dude <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole objective <laughs> save the tennis balls <laughs> so so john die is guys is, is on listening what's up john i'll see you in indianapolis tomorrow excited about that for the american contractor summit but he says is that the 
Brady. Are you the Brady? Do you, do you know Mr. John Dye? I, I do. I do miss, know yeah. Mr. John Dye. The Brady, hey. Um, no, yeah. I love it, man. Say, give a shout out to my man John. For those of you who are going, let, let me, if you're watching the show right now, uh, they're doing a live and in person presentation or a, a conference in the next couple days uh, in Indianapolis, the, the, the American Contractor Summit. I was, I was there last time. It was incredible. John, I love you. I'll be at the next one. I know. I'm so sorry I couldn't be there. I just had so much going on this week. However, you guys have, a lot of you have met Bree Reese, yeah. who is uh, uh, one of our coaches at TRA. She's the CEO of my uh, of my roofing company. And she's the also true talent. You know, the true talent. My sister. Coming, she's right? the real brains behind yeah, the operation. Exactly. So we send in reinforcements and she's going to bring down the house. So it, it, it's he's got an incredible lineup and by all means, like it's it's an amazing opportunity to really you know cram in some some incredible growth and education in a really short period of time for like next to nothing. I think yeah, it's, a it's so really really cheap um, you know investment to be able to get a, get get all that value in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So so Brady, you know I, I really want to talk about not only roofing, but we'll get into some solar stuff and how how some new solar contracts, especially with Randy getting into the solar. Congrats, Randy! Elite nice. roofing and solar now. So We're that's huge. It. So that'd be a perfect time uh, to be talking about this. But how have you seen you know people use you know you guys' measurement data automations uh, and other tech tools to to really you know have efficient growth in their oh, company? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me back up. What? Story. What? What happened? Oh, what more wrong? stories, man. It, the, the Eagle View. It's got a pretty cool story. Like I, I was, I was at the at an event recently in Denver, and I, I think it was I don't know if it was you or one of the other guys in our team just was really kind of sharing how Eagle View has come about. I mean, how many planes you guys got? Like how the technology works? Like. How did that all happen? And then, yeah, then hold that thought, Nick, because I want to definitely carry into that piece. Mm -hmm. of it. No, you're good. Let it roll. Still, we're still on story time. Let's get some. <laughs> <other> story <laughs> time. Yeah, I, I mean, so so rewind, you know, eight years ago, um, you know, Eagle View was actually buying imagery off of Pictometry. So Pictometry was is the company that was flying all the aircraft. And that was really typically based around all the government, counties, municipality entities that are just grabbing imagery from us. But um, essentially, we, our founder of Eagle View, what first started, I swear, uh, from a bird box, from a literally a bird box of being able to uh, triangulate images onto that, so let's call it a structure, and actually derive measurements, but not just measurements, but pitch values, right? To actually detect exactly what that pitch value is. And once we started to form that out and that, that concept and all those, you know, all those derivatives from it, we started capturing all that data from, from pictometry. And then, you know, we quickly became pictometry's number one customer. And we then went into like a 50, 50 merger and then the Eagle View brand kind of got broadcasted over the top. But, you know, Randy, when you were first buying Eagle Views, we probably had like 20 aircrafts or so. Um, today we're sitting over 130 aircraft wow, from the country, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it's a fixed wing aircraft, you know, it's, it's just a normal aircraft. There's not much interior in it because most of that weight is on that camera system. that's on the belly of the aircraft. So it's, it's a, it's a cool concept. And, you know, everyone says like, I want to fly one, but it's, it's so boring. It's like being in a NASCAR. It's just left turns. It's all it's doing. It's just back and forth like this, but. Um, so it's just flying all over the place basically. Yeah. So if you look at, let's say like, uh, let's do Denver, right? If it's the yeah. Denver Metro, it's, it's going to go and measure how you, how you mow your lawn, just back and forth, back and forth. And then oh, double wow. over the X side, because what we're doing is just capturing all this imagery, not just what you call orthogonal, which you're straight down, but we're also capturing oblique angles, which is a 45 degree angle. And that's how we're able to drive all the pitches into all these structures is we're looking at it, not from just your top, but at the side. So it gives you a whole different perspective of the structure and allows you to actually measure it because you're looking at it at a top down, you can see where the lines are, but you don't know how they match up on the pitch. So it actually creates a 3D wireframe on it. Wow. So, so when you're flying and you, you're coming, you know, on the, on this particular pattern, are you just taking a whole bunch of pictures like click, 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 click as your as, as every single house goes by? And then it, then you come by the other direction and you're getting them from the other direction. And yeah, yeah. how does that even work? Like you got millions of pictures. <laughs> How does that a work? lot we have a lot of pictures and, and that's just like if i were to oh go and fly, you know the, the dma the, the area of denver right that's a lot of square miles like just in itself and that's yeah you know, thousands tens and tens of thousands of photos that we're taking and we have different lenses that we're using now some are on a rolling scale so it allows us to do that so we don't have to cross it but 
it's it's so it's so much data. It's making our Amazon Web Services budget just skyrocket. Right? So, <laughs> so it's it's a it's a it's a tremendous amount. We're you know we're in the billions of photos now across the country. My gosh. You know, wow. you know, you you know, you know how fast Denver or LA County or any of those guys are, are growing. So you have to constantly re up on those photos as much as possible, just for the new builds or just recency. Or I mean, take Louisiana for a matter of fact; they've had continuous storms roll through and destroy structures. So we have to go back over and fly over it. So we know exactly where that structure was. We take the pictures after it's gone to showcase it for your insurance side and as well as the contractor side where that structure was and so we can mimic those structures where they were so like you know everybody has a peace of mind of where everything is you know man wow. i just the, the logistics of that is just like it's mind a, blowing to me it's a lot it's it's a lot and that's you know a lot of that stuff was done in our rochester office over in new york so they uh, they have a lot of people over there making sure all the all the data is clean it comes through and then it goes into processing and it's a it's a it's extremely manual process just to get that aerial, but we own that whole stack, right? We we go and grab the images, and then those are the images we use to measure everyone's reports. Wow, yeah, super cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, Randy, what do you think? Do you have any more so, story times you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just th that sort of thing. I don't know about you. Who's it's watching, super like, cool. That sort of yeah, thing intrigues cool. me. I just like I, that's just how my brain works, right? I go into something, I just like automatically go into like logistics, like. How many people? How yes. like what kind of technology? How many yeah. points? Like how does that actually work? Like the behind the scenes of of how that works is just super intriguing to me. You know, it's cool too, Rand. This is another story for you. Is that you know typically when a pilot needs to go and get his commercial license, he has to go out and get you know, ten thousand hours before he's actually certified for a full commercial pilot. So a lot of times they just fly for free, right? They just want to get hours, and so we actually hire and pay these guys that are going to look for the license. Now it's not. Like I said, it's extremely boring flight, but at least they're still getting their hours and they're getting paid like a, a solid, solid wage just to go out and do this for us. So we we have all of our pilots. They go and fly. They get their hours, and we you know we pay them well so that you know everyone's happy, right? So it's not just some random person out there flying, hoping and wishing, but we actually make sure there's a there's a path for them beyond just Eagle View. Yeah, that's really cool. That's like yeah. a dual purpose. Yeah. And at, at, at what point you know do you have pictures of all the houses and you don't need 120 planes is that even like a thing I, th I think we'll always need imagery right because you know when you start talking about like machine learning and artificial intelligence it's it's almost there right it's almost there where it, it can be applicable but it needs to have somewhere to learn it from right so if, as we continue to grow our communities mm -hmm. those houses need to be captured right and so then we're able to apply the machine learning pieces to it so it can go in and analyze and and automatically give out a spit out a report, but you're, you're everyone's always gonna need imagery. There's no question about it. That's where all this stuff started. You know, with contractors looking to bid on, on on their on their appointments, is they needed some sort of site assessment, right? So they're using satellite in the beginning just to look at what in the heck they're driving to, or you know, what does that look like? That's kind of where it all started. Yeah. So what's the difference, right? There's there's obviously other competitors out there, and I think you're the only ones that have your own fleet of planes. Is that right? Correct. Yep. And everyone else is using satellites, like. What's the yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's four, there's four different types of like real imagery, like facets of, of that business. And obviously number one is satellite. We all know that, you know, it's two, three million feet in the air. It's way up there and it's pretty granular, right? Or it's not very granular. It's, it's very vague. Right. And then it, and it, then it comes down to your fixed wing, which is, which is where we kind of play. We're about five to 7,000 feet to where we fly and we do all of our, all of our, our lanes of traffic. And then obviously you have drone, right? The drone piece is where it's been, it's just growing in popularity, um, which has that very significant um, accuracy to it. But, you know, the one big piece about that is that you still got to go to the site to go and capture all that, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's playing, we have the same type of granularity as a drone does, but you don't have to go out and do it yourself. You don't need to get a license to do it. You, you're not restricted. We have that ability to go and capture that. So, you know, you're, you're, you're going to see in a satellite type facet is, 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 you know, 15 inches per pixel. So that little dot of color in your screen. So you zoom into Google, it gets really blotchy, whatever. Right. But with us, you know, we're around two to three inches per pixel and we're trying to go even sharper than that. So that when we actually do these measurements, we're looking at a per inch basis, not a per foot basis. 
So that's what gives us that most accurate report out there in the market is because we have the clarity of the image there. You know, in the, in the path forward is even sharper, right? And talking to some of our, our, our chief level staffs, they're saying, Brady, at some point, you go out in your backyard and I can count how many ice cubes are in your cocktail. That's how fat, that's how far we want to go down to this market so we can really wow. choose all the property analytics behind it. That's scary to even think about. Yeah, that's yeah. insane. Yeah. <laughs> but, but needed, but needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool all right well i i i went to story time Let, let's go back on to the agenda piece i'm good at derailing things nick back at you brother mm, all right now i'll get into the meat of it hey all right sounds good to me well basically i was just asking how are you seeing contractors implementing this into their business for you know efficient growth uh for their company yeah i mean <sighs> You know, being in the business for 10 plus years, you know, or 12 plus years that we've been doing it, you know, we've been seeing these 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 wins from contractors all over the board. And the, the reality is that you kind of break it down to five different segments of where, you know, uh, Eagle View measurements can really affect their business. I mean, you have your prospecting, your sales piece, right, where your leads come in. Then you have your measurements, right, and the bidding quality, right, and the planning and scheduling, right. You got to order your material accurately and the schedule that appointment with to actually put the roof on. Then the install actually happens, right, where all that money comes and all that focus comes into the one part of it. And the very last step, the most important step, is profit, right? Is revenue mm -hmm. paid and paying the commission to your sales rep. So, you know, the what we see in this is how do you look at all those five segments of that typical sale, but you compress it. Right. How do we take out all those time killers in a typical contractor's process to get to that point? Right. So, you know, one of the things that we look at is, is like, how long does it take you to drive out, get a ladder, measure mm -hmm. it, sketch it all out, put in all your quantities, go in your truck, write out the estimate, right? All those little pieces, comparably able just to order an Eagle View report, know exactly what your estimates already is when you knock on the door. Right. Mm -hmm. So, compared when you walk to that homeowner's house, and you go in there to pitch because what a contractor told me was, Brady, I don't make any money on top of the roof. I make it in the kitchen, right? Mm -hmm. so my, my ability to actually go to a homeowner and spend the, the right amount of time inside the house rather than outside of the house is what makes me able to sell more and scale my business. So I spend the time where it's needed, right? Because we're talking about time. So I, that's typically what we see is, is that it's, it's just in the beginning of the process, and then when you come into like the measurements piece of being able to have an accurate measurement, it's not just your bidding, right? It's your ordering. So what happens when you order material and you're one square short, right? You got three guys on the roof waiting for one additional square from your local distributor and they're yes. just sitting on their hands until you get that extra square, right? Or the ridge cap or it's, you know, it's ice and water, whatever it may be. But a lot of times these, uh, a lot of times roofers are just looking really, you know, really vaguely at exactly what the process is and they don't want to spend the extra money to be accurate. The point is, is that the accuracy in the front is what translates all the way through that life cycle of that project to allow them to skip all those unnecessary time killers they typically have in that life cycle. And it happens mm -hmm. a lot. But we get to learn a lot about that from our contractors' successes. And so that's kind of what it comes down to is that if you're able to, quickly give an estimate to a homeowner, right? If I can give you one more appointment a week, you just pay for all of your Eagle views, right? If mm -hmm. I can give you one more chance, one more opportunity to pitch to a homeowner, but to know that that bid is exactly what's going to be in the material order, which is exactly going to be put on the roof. So until you're sweeping up the last nail and collecting that last check, that's kind of the overall goal of what you want to do. And that project compression is kind of where that the whole ideal is, is being able to eliminate time killers so that you can focus on the brand and the customer and your project and just go and get another one. Go get another one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen to that. Well, I think there's another side of this. And the way one of the things that's a driver for me as a consumer is safety. Yeah. You know, the, the risk factor, when you're on a roof, the longer you're on a roof, you're, 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 you're high risk, right? You know, and also when you're talking about insurances and stuff like this, I know in our industry, a lot of roofers play that gray area. I mean, technically, if you're a salesperson, and you climb up on that roof, you start measuring, you're using a tool, which means you are now a roofer or you are really? now a, a you can technically be classified as a laborer. Right. Yep, you know, really. there's, there's a little bit of gray area from doing an inspection because you got inspectors, you got adjusters, you got people that go up and look. But as soon as you start working on that roof. You know, it, it can really cause issues 
of you know your insurances and it could the, the amount of insurance is crazy plus just the straight risk factor yeah you know i want to minimize my risk so for me i right. want my team on roofs as little as possible right you know verify it cool get off <laughs> yeah pull, you pull the eagle view you know even if they're not like every single roof we're pulling them and and we just budget it out throughout all the roofs that we actually sell and job costed and and we, it pays for itself yeah. tenfold I, I, it's you're not throwing tennis balls over right over over, no. over the roof right it, it, it's not the anymore. part of like your insurance premiums right like how much are you paying when you have that many guys on top of a roof every single day for hours of the day and when you're like again i'm going to come back to it but, you know you should be they should be inside the house for goodness sake right that's where that's where the business happens that's where the transaction happens so a hundred percent i mean you talked about like the insurance piece right i mean a lot of these carriers are, are using eagle view right so when you go and have that adjuster meeting, it should be apples to apples, right? There, the, that that meeting should be 15 minutes, not going back and forth for days and days at a time. They should bring the Eagle View with them to have that meeting with the adjuster and then go from there, right? Instead of having to go back and forth on what was classified as, as how much ice and water you need, right? So I know Denver's brutal with ice and water and all those building codes of yeah. elevations, right? Across the street could be completely different. But at the end of the day is that if you're bringing apples to apples to those, those adjustory meetings, those transactions happen so much faster, so much faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a quick break to, to thank our sponsors. And then after that, I do want to dive into the solar, the solar side of things, right? And we'll talk about some cool ways that, that contractors can utilize in solar. Maybe teach Randy a thing or two here as he makes that yep. next adventure over into to solar. So I'm pretty excited about that. But we'll start with our, our headline sponsor, Job Nimbus. Job Nimbus is a fully customizable back office solution. Track leads, jobs, tasks from one easy to use software. And with the largest ecosystem of integrated partners, if we don't do it, we have a friend who does. Learn how the number one back office system in roofing it can help you be efficient, be organized, be professional, and be profitable. All right. Well, if you guys have somehow not checked out Job Nimbus yet, do so at info.jobnimbus.com backslash roofing dash academy. And of course, when you get that brand new CRM system set up, you got to make sure you're getting those leads in. So if you need any help with your SEO, make sure you're checking our friends at Hook. Is it time to turn the heat up on your marketing? The website's now been live for four months. We did just under $100,000 of leads coming out of organic SEO. Mm, and lastly, uh, we got our friends at, at Hail Trace with hail season upon us as well. You got to make sure you're using the best resources available to maximize that storm. If you're in the hail game, if you're working hail claims and, and selling roofs that, are, that have hail damage, you need to know where the hail is, how big the hail is, and when it hailed. I mean, if you're on the fence, it's a game changer. All right. So before I, I hit up Brady about, you know, how solar contractors can be utilizing Eagle View and some cool things you're seeing out in the field. I, I'm on the Eagle View website right now. It says this was 2021, beginning of 2020. Five reasons why roofing contractors are moving into solar now. Randy, why are the roofing contractors moving into solar, my friend? So uh, there's a number of reasons why the roofing contractors are moving into solar. One, it correlates quite a bit. Um, two, the, there's, there's tax credits, there's incentives, there's local incentives, utility incentives. And it just makes sense to to do your part to 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 have a, a you know a, a responsible <laughs> environmental impact as just a human being, right? You know, there's a lot of that part of it too, just to do what's right for 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 the earth and and, and to be responsible there. Um, but a lot of people are moving into it for those reasons. But also, it depends on the market you're in. But a lot of these markets, energy rates are rising. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you can get a sustainable renewable energy system and get away from renting, you know, renting energy from these big energy companies that are just, you know, using coal and wind and, you know, and natural gas and some of these things that are not renewable, you know, wh why not? Like, right. So, so it's becoming more and more of a thing. The government's pushing for it. It's, it's becoming more and more um, prevalent in from a consumer's mindset. And it's, make, it's starting to make more and more sense financially because, I mean, you can essentially take your take your um, energy bill, change it out, or even save money by going solar and having all those benefits that I just talked about. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Very good stuff. Brady, now, how you know, as this, you know, these roofing contractors are transitioning into the solar side of things, give us some information on what you're seeing there and how they can implement it. Yeah, absolutely. And Randy, you're 100% right. And I, and I think just to add to that, it's just, it's, it's part of that contractor's evolution, right, is to continue to offer more products in that suite, right, more services, right? Before it was, you know, before where they were now, it's it was just roofing, then it was gutters and siding, windows and doors, right? And it's only it's only applicable to have something that's adjacent or so adjacent, right, to roofing as adding solar to that to that service offering. And so we've gotten a lot of demand from our side because we're obviously already on top of the roof. We're we're already there. And so about three, four years ago, we started really diving deep into solar to better understand that workflow. But like what's the itch, right? What what is that need there? And what we're seeing is is that a lot of this market um, in solar is that an average of 20% of every solar install needs a new roof already, right? So our contractors are already there servicing those needs. And it's only, it's only makes sense for them to offer us something else like solar, right? To add onto that roofing project because it just helps with, with that ticket price, right? It ups that ticket price considerably. And it gives the homeowner just a much more good feeling that they had that the roofer applied, not just their, a good solid roof, but a solar system as well that allows them to save on their energy bills, like you were saying, Randy. So uh, the way that we see the solar market today is, is the, how do we ensure what we've done to roofing and, and having that bankable data at the beginning of the life cycle of a project could carry through all the way to the end. And really what's happening is, is there's, there's a lot of tools out there in the market, but a lot of them are really based on satellite. And as we've kind of discussed, like satellite's not your, not your friend when you're looking for accuracy. So what I've eagle has done in the past couple of years is it started to branch off into a more robust product suite for solar. So we have a couple of reports already out there in the market today. It's called the Inform Advanced. And then we also have the Essentials Plus. But Inform Advanced is basically taking all of our data that we build from our imagery and then we're basically making what's called digital surface model. And what we're doing is we're recreating the entire 3D world and putting the shade scene on top of it. So whereas typically you have to go and build your own shade scene in a lot of these tools, we've already done it because we've already flown it, right? So we know exactly how much shade is hitting, exactly how much TSRF, SAV, it's on top of the roof. And in about two weeks, um, just for a little product drop, we're launching what's called True Design. True Design is basically a tool that helps contractors and homeowners find their actual solar install system. Whereas most of them are all about building it. We want them to find it. So we're looking at at basically automating panel placement on top of a roof with our shade scene and all of our accurate data that we already provide. So we'll have a couple different offerings there and we're really looking forward to it. We've uh, we've kicked it off at a couple of shows, got some great feedback and we're looking to do that not only just by ourselves where contractors can use it, but we want to embed it, right? We want to embed it into our CRM partners like Job Nimbus or Sumo Quote, right? Who have the ability to already manage a typical workflow, but have that Eagle View data go through, you know? And a lot of these CRM partners today, like Job Nimbus and, and Aculinx, Job Progress, all these guys, they already have the integration with Eagle View. And that's where these contractors really do win, is that when they're able to live in that ecosystem of Job Nimbus that they don't have to go and pop around different partner sites. They just live right there in that platform. And then when EagleView integrates in there, all that property data just goes and populates all the estimates for them, all the numerical values. So they don't have to worry about fat fingering or, or double typing issues. It just it just stays in that workflow so there's no error. So that's where EagleView really is trying to really pinpoint is just getting our data into our integration partners, number one. But with when a solar piece comes out is adding that solar attributes with it. So every contractor who rolls up to a house has the option to sell solar on top of that roof. That's that's what we want to do. Give the tools to the contractor so they can go out there and be successful. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah, no, that's, that's great, man. I mean, you got anything to add on the solar side of things? No, it's just the, the, the correlation. Well, here, let me, let me share this, man. I, I don't want to inspire too many people. <laughs> We're going to keep a little bit of an edge here. But, you know, I read something that really that's what kind of the big trigger for me to even go this route, right, is is that the projections are within the next 10 years, about 50 percent of homes in the U.S. are going to have solar. And yes. right now there's less than five percent that have yeah. solar. Mm-hmm. So if that, you know, for those of you who are stormers out there, especially stormers in markets like they've been really crappy, like Colorado, you know, you get that one little hailstorm and there's, say, 
20,000 homes that gets hit. You have 5,000 roofers clamoring over. I, I, I was generous there. Hellstorm, 200 homes get hit. You have 5,000 roofers trying to clamor over those 200 right. homes. Okay. Imagine if the entire market, 46% of that market was, uh, was going to have solar in the next five or 10 years. Do the math. Like what's, what is the market demand? What makes more sense to run your, to build a sustainable business? And I don't know about you, but being in markets that fluctuate up and down and up and down, I'm tired of the roller coaster of, of, am I getting hail? Am I not getting hail? Am I getting, am I going to feed my kids on hail or am I going to have to like survive? You know, it's like, I want to build as an entrepreneur, I want to build a, a business model that I can create predictability that I can create, you know, sustainable growth. And I can really kind of control the growth and the, and the direction of my business without having external factors that I have no control over. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how I think about that's it. As the an key. Entrepreneur. That's the key, especially in a market like Colorado. Yeah, mm -hmm. completely yeah. agree. And to add to that, Randy, it's like the, the cost of, of solar has gone down tremendously. You know, like five, 10 years ago, it was super expensive for a company, you know, for anybody to get into selling solar. It was it was crazy. Right. So that's where you only saw some of those giants out there um, that were kind of doing because they had the capital to go out there and acquire all that. But the price of all this stuff is coming down very fast. So it allows those opportunities for everybody to get involved. Right. In those situations. And it's if you don't jump on it, you're going to be behind. Right. You have to be able to grasp that opportunity. Obviously, it's a great case. It's like you don't want to be just living on hail, but provide more products to your homeowners because they're going to ask for it. Like you said, in the next five, 10 years, they're going to ask for it. It's going to be there. And if you're already there, do it. Right. And the other piece of this, too, is that any typical roofer has been around for 25 years. They have a massive Rolodex of customers that they've already sold and had great projects and you know, interactions with. You can go back through the Rolodex and start offering solar to projects you've already done, right? So you already yep. have your lead list there. You're already safe to go out and attack that. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yep. That's exactly the the pathway there. You know, it's, it's exactly what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, good stuff, guys. Brady, we really appreciate you joining us today, my friend. Yeah. Um, so we usually end this thing with a, a golden nugget, right? So something to leave leave the viewers with. Uh, it could be something to implement, something to avoid. It could be a quote for all I care. It really doesn't matter. But I always make Randy go first. So, Randy, for the 188th time, what do we got for the, the golden nugget today, my friend? You know, I want to focus on time because mm. the most valuable asset that we have as humans and as especially as entrepreneurs is time. Right. It's the one thing you can't get more of. You can't you can always make more money. You can find more people. Those are you know very valuable things. But, you know, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are you using those 24 hours? How are you, you know, um, allocating each and every minute of each and every day? Are you pushing the ball towards a, a bigger vision? Are you working towards something that's special? That's going to change lives. It's going to inspire others. Or are you just wasting your time doing things that are just not valuable? Right. Are you ask yourself that question? I mean, to, to me, I, my encouragement out there is, you know, if you really want to be a great entrepreneur, if you want to grow your business, you want to become the best version of yourself, be obsessive about your time. And this doesn't mean shut your family mm -hmm. out and shut everybody else out. This means when you are working, be all in, be focused and be getting, be working as efficiently as you can. When you're not working, when you're spending time with your family, be all in, be focused, be present, be, be intentional about that time because you don't get that back. Mm -hmm. I love it. Brady? Randy, you stole my stuff, man. But I, I, I'm, I'll add on to it just on the back end of it. And it's, you know, it's how, how do you find the time killers, right? Is how do you identify those time killers? And the number one thing is just use tools that automate processes, right? As be as generic as possible, right? Use tools that automate those processes. And a typical life cycle is find the time killers and eliminate them, then get into new tools that automate all your processes, then you differentiate, right? You can do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you're right, Randy. It's, 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 I had an owner tell me, it was Brady, because I've saved so much time, I stopped being a manager and started to be a leader. And that right. kind of resonated with me because he is the owner. He is the founder. And he was busy micromanaging and not leading his company to success. And that's what's something that's when you think about time savings, it's allowing your time to go home and be with your family. But most importantly, be a leader so you don't have to go and micromanage anything. Help your business grow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love it. Well said. Well, 
Gents, it's been it's been a pleasure, Brady. Thanks for for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate it. And everybody out there, thanks for tuning in to episode one eighty eight of the Star Build Grow Show. Take care. Thanks for God being bless. Here, guys. Appreciate it.